evening, everyone. I'm Joanne Purton. And I'm Carolyn Clifford. Tensions ran high tonight for residents demanding answers into the city's troubling finances and lack of services. This all comes at a time when the city could face being taken over by an emergency financial manager. Let's get right to 7 Action News reporter Cheryl Choden. And Cheryl, what happened at tonight's City Council community meeting? Well, here's the thing. The mayor, the city council, the people who live in the city of Detroit, as you said, they are facing the possibility of a state takeover. They're dealing with a lot of issues. They are frustrated. So when city council goes to a community meeting, the residents let their feelings be known. Take a listen. Six people should never come back to this council. Watch them. At the meeting tonight, which was held in a building at Focus Hope, more than 100 residents gathered. They complained about a lot of things, about no street lights, about a high crime rate, about the deficit. Council members said they're trying to deal with it with possible furloughs, freezing pensions, maybe having the employees pay more health care. But it wasn't enough for the residents. They are upset about their city services, and they talked to council during the meeting, and they talked to us after the meeting. I'm concerned with with the council, with their lack of having the ability to get the issues that's on the table rectified. We know that we're having financial problems. We know that lights are, are out. We know that there's a lot of abandoned property. What we don't know is what's the next step for the city of Detroit relative to where council sits. We're at the point now where it's not even about cutting pounds of flesh, it's more about amputating limbs, and we can't go too far in that direction. So the long-term focus has got to be what can we do to generate revenue and uh, increase the population in the city of Detroit. We still have a mayor, we still have a council, we're still in a position to make the decisions. They're tough decisions, we are making them, but it's going to take time for them to take hold and create the savings necessary in order to stop the bleed of cash. I'm not happy with a lot of things that I'm seeing in the city. I'm not happy with the decisions that's being made. And it, it's, it's just a lot of things that, that I, I'm just dissatisfied with here. Now, council members say that they understand the frustrations. They say they live in the city of Detroit. They are frustrated, too. They say they're doing everything they can to try to make things right, to try to stave off a state takeover. At the City County Building, I'm Cheryl Choden, 7 Action News. Cheryl, from watching that meeting, it seems like it didn't get out of hand like it sometimes can, at least tonight. And tonight it did not, Carol, and you're right. I mean, even though some of the people got heated, I thought some of their, they had some very um, constructive criticisms. And that, like I said, the council members said they look up and see street lights out in their own neighborhoods, and they are frustrated, and they want things to get better as well. So I think it's good they do it once a month. They get together, and then they come up after the meeting and talk to the council members. So at least they get, uh, they get to talk to the council members. And you're right, tonight it did not get out of hand. Which is good news. At least hopefully something will get resolved. Thank you so much, Cheryl, hopefully. for that live report. Hopefully. Here's what's going to happen tomorrow with City Council. Members will hold a 9 a.m. public hearing on the proposed pension freeze. Then at 9.30, the Council will hold another hearing on the increase in furlough days for city workers. Now, these proposals are for about 600 non-union workers. The Detroit City Council will vote on these two ordinances at a scheduled 2.30 afternoon meeting.